The two-beam transmission hologram lab is included in our Photon 2 lab manual because it's a classic. However, there are many additional pieces that are needed beyond what is in the Photon 2 kit. So you can use this video to show how a two-beam hologram is made, or if you're interested, you can purchase the additional pieces and try one for yourself. There are a lot of online resources that you can go to. For example, www.holokits.com. These will give you additional instructions, as well as information on where to purchase supplies. It's a fairly typical setup for recording a two-beam transmission hologram. The laser that we're using is a low power, perhaps 5 milliwatt, helium neon laser in a sturdy laser mount with controls that allow us to more carefully refine the beam direction. The beam splitter is not the cube beam splitter that you have in the Photon or Photon 2 kits. It's a plate of glass that's coated in such a way that it's nearly perfectly transmitting at one end and reflecting at the other. This allows us to control the amount of light that is going in the two directions. The object beam, which will be illuminating the object of the hologram, is reflected from the glass plate, travels through a microscope objective, which expands the beam. It then strikes the object, which is mounted on a sturdy stand. And from there, the light is scattered to the holographic film. Here we're using an old film plate just to check the alignment. The reference beam passes through the beam splitter plate, strikes a mirror, is then expanded by a second microscope objective, and travels directly to the film plate. We've outlined the beam paths on the table so that you can see the two separate paths from beam splitter to object to plate, and from beam splitter to mirror to plate. It's important that these two beam paths be approximately the same. To do that, you can either use a tape measure or a meter stick. I prefer to use just a piece of string. So I lay out one path, cut a length of string to that length, and then try and match that length with the other path. Our shutter is a simple cardboard box. We lift it up for 30 seconds or so, wait for vibrations to die out, and then raise it for the exposure, about 15 seconds in this case. Film development proceeds about the same as it does with a single beam hologram. First developer, until the film is dark, not quite as dark as it would be with a single beam hologram, about uh, optical density 2.0. We have a 2.0 neutral density filter here for comparison. Then rinse under running water. Bleach. Rinse again. And then finally a, a soak in photo flow, which is optional. Uh, it just helps prevent spotting. This is the image we see when we replace the developed hologram back in the holder in the original position and illuminate it with a reference beam. Here's a hologram made many years ago. It's probably 30 years old. And as you can see, sometime in the last 30 years, this hologram was dropped on the floor and shattered into a number of pieces. Here's the view looking into the largest of the pieces. The object was a brass ring um, with a piece of brass hardware in the middle. Here's the view that you see looking in that smaller piece. Again, you can see the entire image just from a different point of view. Finally, this is a double exposure hologram made by a student many years ago. This is actually done on film rather than on a plate, and the film was sandwiched between two pieces of glass. For the first exposure, this soda can had a heavy weight on the top. I think it was a kilogram weight from the physics lab. The weight was removed and a second exposure was taken. You can see the dark and bright fringes on the soda can that indicate where it moved very, very small amount between the two exposures with and without a heavy weight on top.